Okay, today I wanted to talk about a new type of um, progression that I encountered that was kind of new to me. I was slightly familiar with though I hadn't seen it used quite to this um, effect or with um, prominence. Is um, I've been, been reading more of Legends of Gods and Demons, and it's the idea, I think I'm going to call it a mercantile progression, or you could basically call it a item uh, progression. Um, we're starting to see, I think, probably more of these kind of come up. Um, but the idea being that an aspect that carries a lot of weight and interest and um, fulfillment through the story is this idea, of course, of progression. You have a lot of things. You have um, strength progression, basically, for fighting strength uh, progression, basically. You know, have uh, Naruto start off here, and he's working his way up to here. You basically, this is all pretty straightforward. Where you start off super weak, and you're working towards being strong. And then it resets basically resets and then the same thing happens to the next level to the next level to the next level you have this kind of progression um honest um yeah so one of the reasons why i think it's kind of interesting is because honestly the thing that made me think the most of is kind of um the kind of like typical uh board games um there's a several board games that i've played a decent amount in my life um main one in this is i would say the common one is a uh, monopoly i don't really know if people play monopoly anymore um, but the main one was um, Settlers of Catan, basically. Settlers of Catan did this really well, where basically the main satisfaction that you're working on that makes it fun to play, basically, because there isn't this... It's fun to play, and kind of as you progress through the game of Catan, you're getting more resources, you're getting more um, uh, resources, and uh, you're getting more items, you're getting more land, you're getting more... You're getting ways to get more production. That was the word I was looking for. Production to get more resources from. And basically, you use this resources to get more production, which then gives you more production, which then gives you more resources. And you have this cycle, and you have this then progression as you go through the game. You're working off to try and get more and more and more. And that's the fun part. Honestly, the fun part is getting stuff, getting more stuff. And that's what's really, it's really nice, and everybody loves it. And that's kind of what kind of leads everyone to continue to go through the game and have this sense of enjoyment. You have this sense of progression. You started off here. You started off here with this, and you're trying to get, you know, one sheep, basically. Um, and then you're working your way up until you're able to get, like, three sheep a turn or something like that. You got those two cities and a village or something. You got two sheep. Three cold, two sheep. You know, you're ready to, or is it, yeah, I think it's three cold, two sheep to get upgrade, upgrade your settlements. Um, but basically, it's this idea of progression. So this is where I've kind of seen this in effect most, has been in board games. I would say another one maybe like um, Terraforming Mars or something like that. Um, let's put Mars. DF Mars. Terraforming Mars, where you have this idea of we're trying to get stuff, get production, and build up towards something. So I hadn't really seen that much in um, in stories. But really, there's not a whole lot of uh, merchant stories. Um, I haven't really seen Spice and Wolf, so I'm not quite sure on that. But not a lot of merchant stories, basically. There are a lot of stories of adventure and fantasy, and this is where they work on this. They're kind of in less items. I would kind of specifically call them more like artifact progressions, where it's like, oh, you got the staff of Dead Wizard 5 or something, which allows you to XYZ. Because most all games are turning in, or a lot of mangas are all turning into... Um, MMOs basically these days there's like a huge influx of these that are just basically MMOs and they follow the same rules of MMOs which followed the same rules of D&D of Dungeons and Dragons which kind of set the stage for all of this that kind of just plays out from there but basically that's enough about that the idea of mercantile progression and kind of where it starts off is this idea of we are poor and basically we want to be rich and we're going to establish this the way we're going to establish we're poor is because we can't afford something. I'm, you know, we have a, um, basically you have a, a goal. Let's say there's a goal and that's here. And then let's say we are right here. We are not at the goal. Basically, this is the starting point. This is go. We'll call this go to continue our monopoly. So this is start. We're trying to go here. Now, in between this, we are aware that we're poor. The how we know we're poor is we have... Our main character wants to achieve this goal, but he must overcome the fact that he's poor. Maybe the goal is he wants to go on a journey. You want to go on a journey? That costs money. Uh, maybe you want to enroll in a tournament, but you can't enroll in the tournament because you don't have enough money. 
Um, you want to train with this master, but you don't have influence because you don't have money. You know, you're a nobody. Um, basically, there's this idea that this is now an impediment to the goal. <clears throat> so we establish this, and we also are going to establish this more so because we're going to have a character who is able to do this because they're rich. You know, the rich, um, the rich uh, son who's had everything delivered on a silver platter sort of deal where he's just kind of had everything handed to him, more or less. And so, yeah, so basically these are goals which need to be overcome for it. And that's what we're working towards. We're starting here, we're working up, and that's where we're going. And so what we've got now is we've established this and we've established this. So basically what we're going to do is we have this goal and we're going to bake this item progression in with the goal is basically a way to measure progression or something like that. And so basically then we're going to figure out a way to make money and we're going to come up with some, um, it could be a, some method, it could be a trick, it could be, um, some sort of um, insight. There's any kind of ways that you want to base this around. It's like basically because you want to ask the question of why is the main character able to do this? And you could explain it this, that, and the other. Whatever that reason is, it could be because he has um, special knowledge. You know, Ty Lopez knowledge. Um, it could be because he has a secret. He knows something. It could be because he's really strong. He's able to do this. It could, it could be because he works hard. That could be it. Uh, maybe he's trickery, tricky, you know, tricky Tony, um, everything like that. So it could be any number of these reasons that he's able to use this. And then he can take this and use this to get money. And then the way you usually progress it is the same way you kind of do with the, um, the Dragon Ball Z strength uh, progression is basically what you want to do is you want to start off um, here. You have one, one, um, one rock basically, or one rock. We're going to say rock equals slang for money. Slang for money. Um, and basically, then you take this one rock and you're going to turn it into two rocks and then you're going to turn it into four rocks and you're going to turn it into eight rocks and you're going to turn it into 16, 32, 64, ETC. And basically, this is going to be a sense of progression. So basically, we've got our progression worked out. So we need to figure out how to take one rock and turn it into two. And then you need to figure out how to do this and it's automation. And basically what you're doing is you're selling the audience on this idea of continual progression exponential. Because basically each time the main character hits one of these, you can almost think of it like a hit, like a drug hit or satisfaction. Basically, we're getting this level of achievement. It's like, ah, yes, we've achieved this level. Now we can go on to the next one. Now we can go on to the next one. Now we can go on to the next one. And you're giving the idea and audience to this. But also this, this whole thing is giving us is getting us closer to the goal, basically. This is the goal. This could be the girl. This could be the um, revenging your father. There's a few, it could be any goals. So let's say revenge, uh, revenge father or mother, basically. Parents. Um, it could be um, uh, glory. You know, I want to be the best boxer ever. It could be love. It could be romance. It could be... Um, Usually they can boil down to some of these, um, some of these aspects, but, um, basically you want to save your village, something like that. Save your village. Um, any of these can kind of work together, but basically all this is working towards the goal. We're working towards the goal and we're aiming for this. So, but we have this progression that we're doing this and we're going to use this secret. So basically you could say, Hey, you can use, um, do this one action, the secret action, and you can make money this way. You can go hunt these creatures and I know how to hunt these creatures. Um, and sell their skins for a lot of money. I know this secret stock market, and I know this secret where basically this person is doing some insider training, trading, and what we're gonna do is we know they're doing insider trading, so we're going to copy them or act right before the insider trading, so that way we're gonna make money off of this. Um, it could be the fact that you are um, gambling. Maybe you're gambling and you know you're a really good gambler. Maybe you're gambling on fights and you're a really good fighter, so you bet on yourself to fight and you're continually doing this. Uh, maybe it's not quite um, this, maybe you're just, I need to make a lot of money and every time I win in this tournament, I'm making more money. 
um, something like that, where basically you're doing this. Now, the, the aspect, the uh, reason why I kind of call this more of a, a mercantile progression is, at least in Gods and Demons, the way it works is he usually has these systems set up that continue to exponentially grow outside him. So basically he goes, we're going to go hunt these um, monsters, and they will give us money. And then basically he gets his friends to hunt monsters. And then that gets in more money because, of course, they can hunt more. And then with this money, we can then use it to buy gear. We're going to buy gear. We're going to buy gear slash uh, items. And these gear items allow us to hunt, you guessed it, better monsters. And then these better monsters then allow us to make money. And then basically from there, he can get it and get his friends to make money. And it kind of goes and can kind of continue up on this trail. So you have this thing. So that way, by the end of this, they're having like that. Um, the, the best example of this is kind of, I don't know, whatever the arc you want to call it. But Nai Lee, the main character in Legends of Gods and Demons... Um, he goes to this new place, World 2, we'll just call it. Um, again, part of me, this is a very cheesy story, but it just, it does some of these things really, really well. And I just want to highlight it because I feel like it's stuff that, it's kind of like pop songs. Where everyone's like, oh yeah, it'd be so easy to write a pop song. It's like, it wouldn't. Everyone would do it if it was. It just, what, there's certain things that they do really, 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 really well and other things that they just don't care about. Like lyrics sometimes will usually fall off for certain songs. Um... And they just, they're spending all their money, you know, 99% of their time on the beat or something of the track, you know, that drop or whatever it is that they do for pop songs. And they're trying to get this and make this work. So basically what he does is he has these things called, I think they're called soul stones. And these are money, basically, because they make you stronger. So they have dual usage. So they're money and they make you stronger. So, and basically when you're stronger, you can then make more money. So there's a really valuable items that you're doing here. And they have these things, and basically then he's fighting his way up, he gets money, he gets a little bit more money, he has saves, he does all these different things, he's doing all these different tricks. Because basically the cool thing you can do is friends and hunt, and then we're going to do a switch, basically, at this point. We're going to do a switch all the way up here, where it turns out then, instead of this, now we've reached a new level, now we're, um, him and his friends have enough uh, gear or items, and we're going to come up with a... Uh, new way to make money. So let's think of one. Okay, so we've already done hunting. Maybe we need to do trading. We could do trading, where it's in terms of we're going to um, sell. Um, in the story, Legends of Gods and Demons, Nye Lee does this a whole bunch, where he'll stock up on items, invent a new recipe, and then sell the items for a huge profit. And then that's that's another aspect. So this is another whole basically manner from here. And then basically they can do that and then rinse and repeat. And then the other thing that you could do is you can then continue to expand outward. Maybe instead of having his friends hunt, they go and maybe they, let's go, let's think wild. You know, we're trying to build up this story. Let's buy a company. Let's see. Let's buy a company. And then this company then is going to do the trading for us. And then we're going to have, you know, we're going to have instead of a friends, we're going to have a whole trading company that's going to be doing this for us. A trading company is going to do this. It's going to travel. And basically, you know, we're at once we were doing it in, you know, one city. Over here with this, we can do it in four cities. And we can have this continually build up more and more. And basically the idea is that as this items and mercantile aspect continue to grow, what we're doing is we're getting continually closer to our goal. It's all in service of the goal because we are progressing. There's a natural idea and way you can't really escape it. We're, what are we progressing towards? We're progressing towards the goal. And you can't really ever lose that, lose sight of that because that's when you do it. So Nai Lee wants to become super strong to defeat evil bad guy. Um, that's what he's trying to do. And basically he needs a super, he needs to become stronger and build up a super army. So he has these soul stones and he does all these various tactics. Um, and then maybe one day, you know, one day he then buys this item, which then allows him to steal 
wells are the spirits of wells, which are these, of course, pools of water, which produce soul stones. And then he puts them in this item and then they work times two, or at least they work better, or at least it appears that way. But let's go ahead and say they work better. And then they work better for him. And then they start, you know, these spirit wells um, continually produce soul stones. But then when he takes them, he puts them in the item and he can reuse old, he can also reuse old ones. So ones that aren't doing anything for anyone else, he can now use for them and he can continue to renew them. And basically then he can then take this money that he's using and continue to work it towards, of course, the goal of getting stronger to defeat the evil bad guy. And then he can also use this to get more items and gear and people and all this stuff continually cycles. Now, the key aspect of it that the story does well is that there's continually new ways of doing this. Um, Let's see, continually new. And this is the key part where I don't think um, people give um, credit enough to this guy. Maybe. Again, I'm the only one probably giving credit to him or taking credit from him. But maybe I'm not giving credit. But he comes up with continually new ways where basically you have this this kind of tic-tac-talk or something if you want to do it. Where it's like, okay, we have a plan. And that's the tick. And we're going to carry it out. And that's the talk. And then we're going to develop it. Tic-tac. And then talk. And then this develops. And then we're going to do over here, we're going to do a click, clack, and then clock. And basically, this is the idea of just a one, two, three progression plan, where basically the talk goes into the click and it works one into the other, where it gives us this scalability. Because remember, every time I kind of talked about this before, if you're having, you know, this is where your character starts and this is where he's working towards, this is one arc. And basically, we're going to progress to the story to the end of this one. But then arc two, basically, is going to start off here. It's going to look a lot like this. We're going to start off here, but now there's a new horizon, and we're going to work towards that. And it's continually pushing the envelope, continually going, okay, well, now this next step, now this next step, now this next step, now this next thing, and continually working up and going forward and forward and moving up more and more and more of that direction. Um, but yeah, so this was just, it was just a really interesting system that I thought, um, I kind of liked the way it worked. I liked what the, the author did for it. And I just kind of wanted to highlight it because there's just, it was a news type of satisfaction that the, the kind of stuff that I'd only really seen in the kind of the board games where it's just, um, you know, collecting stuff basically where you're getting more stuff to get more stuff. Um, and it's kind of silly, but it is actually really fun to see it grow and to see it grow all in front of your eyes and everything like that. So that was really fun. Uh, but yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed that and I will see you in the next one.